I now want to talk about one of my favorite topics of this dynamic section. It's called the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So in this analysis, we take a snapshot of a system, which may be complex. It may have moving parts, rotating parts, translating parts, pin joints, but somewhere on that system, at this instance, this snapshot, we can find a point that has zero velocity. And if we find that point, we can assume the whole system is rotating about that single point with zero velocity. And if we find that angular velocity that the system is rotating about, we can then find the velocity of any point on that diagram with relative ease. And this is a fantastic topic. I know it got a little long, I'm sorry, but I really enjoy this. So I have this old bicycle wheel here, and I'm gonna give it a small angular velocity. From your perspective, it's counterclockwise. So we have the velocity at the bottom actually is pointed to your right, and the velocity at the top here, the velocity vector is pointed to the left. Over here, we have the velocity pointed downward, and on the other side, we have the velocity pointed upward. Now let's analyze this bicycle wheel a little bit. I'm giving this bicycle wheel a spin in the counterclockwise direction with a magnitude of omega. If we want to find the velocity at A, we would need to do our cross product. The velocity at A is equal to omega cross r from the rotation center O to A. So this vector from O to A. So if we do that, we have the velocity of A is equal to omega, oh well, it's zero, 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 omega. So omega is actually in the k direction because if we do our regular sine convention, this is rotating, omega is rotating about the z axis which is coming uh, directly out at us and it's in the positive counterclockwise notation so it's a positive number. So this indicates omega around the z axis. And we cross that with the r vector from O to A and from O to A, it's just moving upward in the y direction. So that's zero in the x, that is r in the y, and zero in the k. And if we perform this cross product, we get VA is equal to negative omega times r in the i direction. So what is that telling us? Well, this vector here, It has a magnitude, omega times r, and it is to the left because it's in the negative x direction. Now if we want to find the velocity at b here, we can do the same thing. We have the velocity of b equals omega cross the vector from o to b. And doing this, we have the same omega, 0, 0, omega cross our r from o to b and that is going to be zero and this time it's in the negative y direction so that's negative r and zero and performing this cross product we get vb is equal to omega times r in the i direction so this time it is positive which indicates that this is in this direction and its magnitude is omega times r. Now let's imagine if we had a ground here, if, if this was actually attached to the ground. Now if the velocity of b here is omega times r as it touches the ground, would you believe me that the center of the wheel, or actually how fast the bicycle was moving, which is the same as the center of the wheel, is moving at omega times r to the left. I think that, that's a concept. So if this is rotating at omega times r, it's touching the ground, and we've found that the velocity here is omega times r at the ground, then if this is rolling on the ground instead of at a fixed point here, 
the center of this needs to be moving to the left at a velocity of omega times r. Now let's analyze the system. Instead of spinning about a fixed point, it is actually rolling against the ground here. And we just said that the middle of the wheel must be traveling at omega times r. My question is now, if it's rolling against the ground, this is a different scenario than what we were analyzing before, what is the velocity at the top at a if it's rolling against the ground? Would you believe me if I said the velocity of a is equal to the velocity at the center, the center here, plus the velocity of a with respect to the center? The velocity of a with respect to the center. This is what it actually is. And what is this term here? How do we figure out this term? Well, this term is omega cross r from the center to our location a. And we just did that analysis, and that comes out to be negative omega r in the i direction. So let's figure out the velocity at A. The velocity of A, if it's rolling against the ground, is the velocity of O, which we just said was omega times R. And let's get our signs right. This is omega times R in the I direction, in the negative I direction, because it's pointed to the left. And then we add this term, which is o negative omega times R in the I direction as well. And that comes out to be negative 2 omega times r in the i direction. So by doing this, we figure out that the magnitude of the top of the wheel, the magnitude, the velocity of the magnitude at the top of the wheel, is twice what it is in the middle. Because we're taking into account the velocity of the middle of the wheel, as well as the rotational aspect, which makes the top of the wheel traveling faster than the middle of the wheel. Now for the mind-blowing part. Let's take the velocity at the bottom of the wheel, at point B here where it touches the ground. And we can use the same sort of logic here about what the velocity is. We could say it is the velocity of B is the velocity of O plus the velocity of b with respect to o. And this term here is omega cross r from o to b. And we already figured that term out, and that term is equal to omega times r in the i direction. That's the positive direction. So vb is equal to negative omega times r in the i direction, that's the center, right, to the left, and then we add omega times r in the i direction. So these two cancel each other out. This one's negative and this one's positive, and we get a velocity of zero. So the velocity at b is equal to zero. Now that takes a minute to wrap your head around. Okay, I want to prove to you that the velocity, when this car is rolling against the ground, the velocity at the bottom of the wheel is zero. And to do this, I'm going to mark around the wheel with chalk and then drive past the camera. And what we should see is up here, where the velocity is twice the velocity of the center of the wheel, we should see blurry uh, chalk and then at the bottom we should see a clear picture because the velocity is zero at the bottom of the wheel. So let's try that.
Now if you take a look at this scenario and you convince yourself that the velocity at the ground is zero, we have this linear relationship. So as you see, if we look at the, the distance from B here all the way up, we actually have a linear relationship between the velocity. So we could pick a point along any, on this line anywhere and figure out the velocity because it's a linear relationship. So as closer we get to B, the closer we get to zero in terms of velocity. And since point B has a zero velocity, we have a special name for this, this point. This is called the instantaneous, did I even spell that right? Nope, there's an extra T in there. Let's try that again. Instantaneous center of zero velocity. Instantaneous center of zero velocity, and that is at B. So it, as a part of the system, because of the instant that it's moving right now, it may not be the same in the next instant, but for this instant right now, that velocity at B is zero, and we can find a angular of velocity about the instantaneous center. And that is this, omega IC. So we treat B like it's a fixed point, like the whole system is rotating about point B. So how do we figure that out? Well, we must, we know that omega IC, let's write this out, omega IC, r from b to a, so that's the vector from here to here, equals negative 2 omega r in the i direction. And through this, we can figure out, we know that this vector is 0, 2 r, 0, because it's 2 r up from b to a here, that's the vector from here to here. And we can figure out omega IC. And once we have omega IC, then we can find the velocity at any point, any arbitrary point. So point C, let's say the point C is up here. And all we would need to do is find the vector. Let's get a different color for this. We would need to find the vector That's point C, R from B to C. So the velocity at point C is then equal to omega IC cross R from B to C. So it's very handy to find this omega IC, the angular velocity about the instantaneous center, because then we can figure out all the velocity vectors wherever they may be. And the velocity vectors will always be perpendicular to the vectors to that point. So if we draw a vector from the instantaneous center to a point where we want the velocity, it's always going to be perpendicular here, so the velocity of C. And that's a very handy property when solving these systems.